the, the really interesting stats about Twitter is that there are 330 million people using it monthly, 100 million people using it daily, 100 million people who go to Twitter because they want that immediacy, they want that news, they want that hit of the latest goss, they want to they connect, they want to talk. They like the, the funkiness of it. Hi, it's great to have you on Your Career Podcast. I'm Jane Jackson and thank you for listening. If you're a new listener, why not subscribe to this podcast so you're the first to listen to each new episode that'll provide inspiration in your career. Just go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio if you use an Android device and click subscribe. I've also a free Kickstart Your Career audio course that you can find on my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Jane Career Coach. See you there. Welcome to Jane Jackson Careers, a podcast that takes your career to the next level. Here's your host, Jane Jackson, author of Amazon Careers bestseller, Navigating Career Crossroads. Welcome back to My Careers Podcast, where I interview fascinating professionals who've made amazing career changes. Now, today, I'm very lucky to have on the show Keith Keller, who is known internationally as the global Twitter marketing specialist. He's actually a bit of a guru. Okay, he's a popular speaker on the subject, and he's appeared on numerous radio shows, teleseminars, webinars across the United States and Canada, UK and Europe, as well as Australasia. His regular tweets, at Keith Keller, that's his handle, a testament to his passion for sharing the latest information about Twitter, as well as other social media platforms. And he certainly has an ever-growing list of success stories at over 57,000 Twitter followers. Now, Keith is in the top 1% of Twitter specialists. In fact, thanks to Twitter, for one of his events, he reached over 4.2 million people in one day. One day. I interviewed Keith about his career journey in episode 84 four of my podcasts. So if you want to find out more about his background and his career journey, hop over to episode 84. But today we're going to be talking about why Twitter is important in your job search. And if you're an entrepreneur for networking and how to grow Twitter followers and leverage this platform most effectively. Plus, we're going to find out all about Keith's new Twitter projects that include his exciting initiatives with video on Twitter too. So welcome back to the show, Keith. Well, it's episode 84. That sounds like a long time ago, doesn't it? It was, it was. And now we're going to be up to episode 150 something. I can't even think as soon as it's scheduled, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, episode 54 for your career journey, because it was a really interesting and eclectic one. But today, because Twitter has just been growing and growing, and and as you say, 32% of all Australians are now using Twitter. And across the world, and especially across, across the United States and Europe, the percentages are even higher. What I want to ask you today, just to start us off is now, you know, for job search and also for B2B marketing for entrepreneurs, LinkedIn is very strong. But Twitter, don't you think, is a really good addition to LinkedIn? Oh, absolutely. Most, yeah, and most people don't really know how to use Twitter as effectively for this means. So what are your thoughts on Twitter for job seekers or for mm. entrepreneurs who are looking to build their personal brand? Well, let, let me start with a couple of reasons why you would want to use Twitter because it is thumping. It's growing again. It actually had a really major surge in the last three three months. That's a fact. Grew 4 million users in the last 90 days. Really? Wow. But um, the, the really interesting stats about Twitter is that there are 330 million people using it monthly, 100 million people using it daily, 100 million people who go to Twitter because they want that immediacy, they want that news, they want that hit of the latest goss, they want to they connect, they want to talk. They like the, the funkiness of it. It's, it's a really cool app that you can, you know, while you're waiting at Starbucks, you could be networking. I've got a really cool story about this I'm going to come back to. But uh, the, the, so there's 100 million people on it using it every day. 32% of Aussies have now warmed to the idea that you know, Twitter's not bad. That's about eight million of us using Twitter every you know every day or every few days. So there's there's people in Australia using it. So that that's the 
the thing I want to put right to, to bed. That it's, it's a dead platform. It's not dead. People love it. But the thing that's very interesting about Twitter as it relates to job search and as it relates to LinkedIn is that there is a 46% chance that if you're connected to someone on LinkedIn, they will have a Twitter account. So why not connect with them there as well? Because it works in a slightly different way. You know, LinkedIn has an app. It's a bit daggy, but it has an app. But Twitter is all about the app. Twitter is all about being out and about and sharing photos. And, you know, I really did have an ice cream and it is really sunny at the beach today. And look at this emu that stole my lunch, you know, <laughs> which actually did happen. Weekend. So it's that. It's another level of connection you know, and job seeking, and I was thinking about this recently because I was a job search cat, as you know. Job seeking is not about just looking at the paper on a Saturday once in a while. You know, job seeking and entrepreneurship and business in general is about networking all the time. Hey, how's your family? How's that car going? Did you get that Mustang? I wouldn't mind one. Is it going well? Was it worth the money? So suddenly you're talking on a secondary level. So that when opportunities do come up, like I'm speaking next Tuesday, I mean, that's got a, that came from somewhere, just didn't come out of thin air. Someone found me because someone recommended me. So they found Twitter, you on Twitter, Keith? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. But they connected with me. They, mm -hmm. uh, they, I'm speaking about Twitter, but they connected with me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. yeah? So LinkedIn by far is a great networking tool and no one would, you know, no one would discount that. But as an additional idea, and I would use it in this context, as an additional idea, why not add Twitter to the mix? Because there's a 46% chance that if you bump into someone at a networking event, they're going to have a Twitter account. 46% chance if you're already connected on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. There's a 32% chance that if you just run into anyone in the street, they're going to have a Twitter account. So we're getting it. But the thing that's really powerful about Twitter is the immediacy of the DMs. And I want to share this really cool story. Which absolutely wait, wait, before you do, before you do, yeah. let people know what you mean by DMs. Because oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the, way, the way that Twitter works, uh, slightly differently to the other platforms, is a bit of an etiquette system, is you can't really direct message, DM someone, unless you're following each other. It's a bit of an etiquette thing. There's a way around it. You know, if you're clever, you can do it. But the general rule of thumb and the general etiquette of Twitter is that if you follow me and I follow you, we're sort of besties now and I can chat to you and you can chat to me if you want to. You know, it's like the phone ringing, but it's actually plugged in. Yeah. So that means so, that if you're connected to someone on Twitter, um, then they can send you a direct message. But if they're not connected to you on Twitter, they can just tweet you and use your handle, but they can't a send you a private message. Not absolutely impossible. It's getting easier. And, in fact, some sites allow it and there's ways around it. But the, the etiquette of Twitter is that if, if you followed me and I followed you, then really you've given me permission to stay alive. If someone isn't following you, it's actually really rude. If you if you can find a way to DM them, it's really rude. It's like a real estate agent knocking on your door trying to buy your house. Okay, that's great. You want to buy my house. I don't want to sell my house. Can you please go away? I'm busy. You've got an agenda. I don't have an agenda. You're interrupting my time. So um, that analogy is actually very relevant because we're all busy, extremely busy. But uh, as a direct result of what I've just said there, I, I follow lots of people consciously and deliberately first. I'm humble enough to say, you know, it's okay if you don't, haven't heard of me yet. Australia's a long way away. I live a long way from the city. You may not have come across my stuff. So I actually consciously, deliberately follow lots of people all the time, hundreds, hundreds a day. Can I and, can I just tell you a funny story? You're saying yeah. you know, like you're far away in Australia as I am. I was interviewing Brian Basilico in the US. Oh yeah, and yeah. When yeah. I when I finished interviewing him, he was saying, "Hey, do you know Keith Keller?" And I'm going, "Who's Keith Keller?" And he goes, "Keith, he's in Australia. He's near you. He's in Melbourne." I went, "Well, I'm in Sydney." But he goes, "You got to connect with him." And here's someone in America oh, recommending but, you. But you hadn't you hadn't heard of me. Not yet, but I heard about you through a guy in America. <laughs> I guess, guess where we were chatting. Just guess where we were chatting. 
What, when you were chatting with uh, Brian Basilico? Guess how we met. I don't know. Tell me, Twitter? Twitter. Mm. So he's a guy that's just the guru of, uh, where does he live? Uh, Chicago? Is it Chicago? Or he, he's, he's, got got the, he's got the bacon, the bacon system. Right, right. He's, he's got a system mm-hmm. and he connected with me and because uh, he connected with you. And this is, this is actually what I'm talking about. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Word of mouth. Mm. Do you know someone that, dot, dot, dot? Do you know someone that would fit in here? dot, dot, dot. Do you know the marketing manager for dot, dot, dot? It's not raw anymore. It's not like answering an ad in the paper. Do they still have the ads in the paper on a Saturday? I don't know. Do they still oh, do that? There, there are some print ads, but most people hop onto Seek or Indeed. Seek, Seek or Monster. You know, yeah, but it's, it's you know? predominantly online. But now, Keith, but I, do, I do want to hear your story that you were going to yeah, tell. Yeah, we'll come back to it. Story. But just before you tell us the emu story, um, just back to branding on Twitter. Okay, so so you set up an account, just for people who don't know and the story. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. So they set up an account. They've got to get give themselves a name or a handle. So yours is at the at sign Keith Keller. Mine is yeah. at Jane Career Coach. Okay, but once they've set it up, how can they brand it? Can you tell us about you know like the yeah. cover image yeah. and the tagline? Yeah. You give yourself. No what should people no. do? First things first. Try and get the simplest uh, name you can. So if you can get your own name, which of course with three hundred and thirty million users is almost impossible, but try and find a way to have something in the in the handle that's indicative of you even really famous people i've had lots of trouble finding because they just didn't think of doing that and you know because they've got the maybe their dog's favorite dog's name is this or the business name is that or the name on the house or their street name or their wife's you know doctor's second cousin you know it's it's sometimes it's really bizarre how the name on the twitter handle has nothing to do with you so make it easy for people to find. Just say you bump into someone at a networking event, think about the person. They're going to type in Keith Keller. But if my Twitter handle is not Keith Keller, it might not come up. Yeah, it will, but there's a lot of other Keith Kellers, 175 other Keith Kellers in the US that I know of. Mm. So you've got to make it really super simple. The second thing is you've got quite a large amount of time to create a buyer. I would use that time or that space to be, say something that's indicative of who you are. Sure, if you love pizza and you like running and you've just had a baby, that's great. Uh, that's excellent. But it has nothing to do with what you're trying to achieve. If you're on Twitter for fun because you like watching Q&A and tweeting on the Tuesday night, fine if, if Q&A is on a Tuesday night. You know what I mean? If you're just tweeting for fun, say whatever you want. But if you want to brand yourself, say, you know, I'm a human resources professional, I like running and I've got a cool dog and I do have a daughter, but I also love my job as a human resources professional or I'm a a speaker, I'm a radio announcer, I'm a singer in a band, here's a link to my latest song. Yes, I also like pizza, but that's got nothing to do with who I am. The reason I say that, and you've probably seen this too, so many people waste that space with rubbish. Keith, how many how many um, characters can you use? Tell people how long how long yeah. the tagline can. I, I can't remember the exact number. It's a it's it's quite that's quite a lot now. It's quite enough. What I personally like to do, and I, I don't think anyone else does this, but this is what I personally do. I like to give my, my title. I'm a global Twitter marketing specialist. You know, that's what I like to do. I like to put that at the top in bold. And then I just like to fill it in with, because I'm always trying new things. Magic Melburnians now available on YouTube. You know? <laughs> but, so I like to put a, a little title, you know, career podcast professional, uh, human resources guru. Speaker extraordinaire, something like that, in bold, in capitals. But you, you, look, I don't know the exact number, but you've got quite a, a lot of room to play with. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage you. You know, the, this is the one thing I would actually encourage you to do more than anything. And I, I even forget to do this myself. Is look at your bio and your tweets on different devices at different times. You know, my bio is optimized for mobile. Looks really stupid on my tablet. It, it's it's not so clever on on the uh, laptop, and it's really sloppy on my PC. But I can't do all four, 
So I've decided to optimise my uh, my bio so that it looks good, you know, in terms of the way that all of the words fit together. Would you mobile. say that, yeah, most people use Twitter on their mobile because they're 80%. on the go. Yeah, they're on the go. That's probably the most important one. You know, it's so, interesting, um, you know, what you say about the, the handle. So Keith Keller, you're very lucky you could get your name. I've got such a common name as Jane Jackson. I mean, there are just millions of Jane Jacksons out there, which is why I, I thought, okay, I'll just have Jane Career Coach. So when I network with someone or I meet them and I tell them my name's Jane Jackson, they'll probably remember Jane, but I'm a career coach. So I thought Jane Career Coach will be easy. Yeah. That's where so you're there it is. You've made it really super simple for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I think, okay, so you've got your handle, which should be recognisable. Then secondly, it's your tagline. So it needs to say something about your area of expertise. Um, mm. And then they, they give you the opportunity to have a, a background image. So if ah. you look at someone, so tell me about the background image and what, yeah, yeah. especially for mobile, because it's such a, you know, it's a small screen. What should people look out there if they're mm. going to put an image for them? So there's two ways, there's two things, they're, they're, they're separate, but they're, but they're related. You can have a square image like Facebook, no, you can have your profile shot. And for that, I recommend a photo if you can. Not everyone's comfortable with their own image, but importantly, if you can, have a photo of you in professional garb, not you playing with the dog or eating pizza or running, unless you, that's what you do. So have a picture of yourself. Be proud that you, you, know, you are who you are. We were talking about personal branding now. We're not talking about watching Q&A and doing it for fun. The second thing is you then have the opportunity to have a banner. It's quite panoramic. I don't know the exact sizes, but it's quite panoramic, 16.9 probably. You know, and so if the banner gives you much more opportunity to tell that story. And you could be very individualistic with that. What I did, and I'm very proud of this, is I was recently named, should be secret, 50, top 50 uh, thought leaders over 50. Oh, which is like congratulations! <laughs> it was bad enough turning fifty, but now I got a little present from the universe to say, "Look, you're not you're not that bad." Here's a little present to soften the blow. <laughs> now I've, I've got a little, congratulations. I've, That's a good one. <laughs> so I put my banner, that my little uh, my little graphic there. But before that, it was my logo, which was panoramic style. It could be you running if you love running, if you are a runner. It could be you speaking if you're a speaker. So the banner can be something that is indicative of what you do. could just be a nice image. But, again, like the bio and like the profile shot, you've got this opportunity to brand yourself. You know, I'm proud of the fact that someone, Brand Quarterly actually, decided to call me one of the top 50 thought leaders in the world who's t- recently turned 50. There's plenty of us, and I was quite lucky to... So I'm, I'm stating that. But if you've, you know, if you've won a medal or if you love speaking and there's a picture of you speaking or you love podcasting and you've got a picture of your studio or you're singing or there's the album cover, whatever. So Twitter in specific, particularly much, 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 much more than LinkedIn is an incredibly visual and essential place. So that you can have videos, you can have audios, you can have images, you can have lots of, sort of stimulus, yeah? And the, the more you tap into that and give it some thought, the more that you're, when people land on your page, which they will randomly, they go, wow, I'll get that. I like that. Cool image. Nice dog. I like pizza too. Now, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so you're trying to connect. Yeah, so people are landing on your Twitter account, hopefully, um, and the more... Uh, followers you have the more people you know obviously will notice you as well so for someone who's starting out whether they're an entrepreneur or whether they're a job seeker Mm -hmm. and they set up their twitter account they've got the lovely panoramic banner they've got a good profile photo they have a good tagline how do they get followers how do they start to build their following yeah look it's it's the it's the quintessential number one question what I, what I want you to promise me, if you're listening to this podcast or if you're watching the video, I want you to promise me that you will never buy them. I want you to promise me that with all your heart. Why would people buy followers? Oh, people do. You know, you can buy 100,000 followers now for 50, $59. But are they real people? No, well, they're real people, but they're not interested in you. Mm. 
Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm, try, cheating, I'm, I'm trying it? to work out how much people have paid. It's 0. 0.001 of one cent to sit. They, they, they found a really a major factory of doing this in Thailand recently. They call it a, I can't remember, a click factory, a click bank. They found this really major factory of all these young Thai girls just sitting on Twitter all day following people for 0. 0.1 of one cent every time which is a lot easier than riding a tuk-tuk. But anyway, there's so, but remember that's what it is. People yeah. some, like some faraway land are being paid to follow you because you want to say to someone at a party, guess what, I've got 57,000 followers. And I've, I mean, I've been doing Twitter since 2010. And most of my mates, most of my mates in the A-team have got 570,000 followers. So I look at them and go, mate, you know, how far have I got to go? It's all relative. Mm. But but so it's better to obviously grow um, a Twitter following organically because yeah. these are people who are interested in you. Uh, that's because right. if, if you buy followers, then there'll be no engagement at all. So that's a bit pointless, isn't it? So getting a that's lot the of thing. Well, don't, don't buy them. Yeah. But the two things you need to do, first of all, you need to be tweet or follow worthy. So you need to tweet. You need to have stuff to tweet about hey, here's a cool article I found about this podcast that talks about how to get a job. I love it. I listen to it every week. I think you'll like it. So, you know, you, you tweet and I tweet often. I'm often looking for articles. This is my style. They call that content curation where you find other people's cool articles and you say, I like this. I think you'll like it too. I've watched the video. It's really cool. It's worth two minutes of your life. So one, that's the one thing. If, you, if people are following you because they know, and you know, because you've seen my feed, I'm always finding the latest cool things. You know, you could go to my feed at any given day and there'd be new stuff there. And that's a trust thing. You know, you know that if you follow me that I'm going to deliver value. So the content curation piece is you're finding other people's stuff. Social Media Examiner, the Jane Jackson podcast, et cetera, et cetera. I listen to stuff constantly sharing and, and passing it on. Pay it forward, here we call it. Okay? The other idea about content is to create pon content. Have your own podcast. Start videos. We're going to talk about videos in, in, in a minute. Start making videos. Start writing your own blogs. Start a blog and actually ask guest bloggers to come in and, and, and add their thoughts. That's what I do because I don't like writing. So I have a guest blog feature where I've got hundreds and hundreds of articles there from really cool people that don't have their own blog and just haven't got round to it. But they're clever. So I give them a voice. So I've got a con that particular co concept about uh, content. I have a two a twofold strategy for content. I curate a lot of content because I'm constantly sharing. I'm eagerly devouring new information. But I'm also trying to create content. And that's the harder part because you've got to do it. And it's time, you know this, you've got to create a podcast and you've got to create a blog post and you've got to get it transcribed. Mm. It's very time-consuming to do the content creation part, but it's incredibly valuable if you can because it's yours. Wow, not only does she have good information, it's her information. She made it up. She wrote it. She's clever. Yeah. So those two things by themselves set up your Twitter account so that you're follow-worthy. Keith, but, Keith so, yeah. so with all of this content creation, whether you create it yourself or whether you're sharing someone else's thought leadership and it's all to do with your area of expertise because that's mm -hmm. what you want to be known for, tell, tell the listeners how important hashtagging is. Ah, so hashtagging will never go away. I'll tell you why. Um, there are 9,000, 9,000, that's nine with 12, with nine with three zeros, yeah, nine with three zeros, 9,000 tweets a second, a second, every second. I mean, there's been, there's been 18,000 tweets since I just said that. Ah. So that means one billion, which is one with 12, how many zeros is that, 12? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Zeros. Maths is not my strong point. <laughs> it's so there's a lot. one billion <laughs> tweets a day. Really? Mm. One billion, one with 12 zeros every day so you know the most frustrating thing about being a content creator and i know you know this is you go to all this trouble to create this unbelievable video which you think is so funny and no one watches it no one gets it no one shares it 
So, so what, what do you do? What do you do? And this is that's why hashtags are the secret ingredient. So, for instance, say you start an account, and you've got a hundred followers. When you tweet, one hundred people get that. This is really really simple to understand. You know, when you get it, one hundred people get it. You mentioned recently, I spoke in New Zealand, four thousand, no, four million three hundred thousand people saw my tweets. This is how I did it. So what you do is you add these hashtags, the squiggly line, pound sign, in front of a word to say, okay, this particular tweet is about Twitter, video, social media for business. Say, just say we'll pick four. That's probably been many, but just as an example. So this tweet is about how to use Twitter uh, for your business. It's related to social media but it happens to be uh, we're pushing you to a video. So that means there are people in the world, because this is how we keep up, people in the world that goes, okay, every time, every time someone says out something that related to um, video, send me a message. You know, you can do this on TweetDeck or Hootsuite or you know, any of these dashboards. You can set up these dashboards. And people follow hashtags. I know it's starting to sound really, really, really complex, but, I mean, it's been going 12 years. And it's a, look, it's a little art. It's like I often say that Twitter is like Pandora from Avatar. You know, it's a, it's a planet. It takes you six years at light speed to get there. When you get there, the animals are really, really scary. You can't speak their language. You can't breathe the air. And everyone's freaking out. Well, what my job is is that I got to Pandora first. I wrote a little book. This is actually how I explain what I do. When you get to Pandora after six years in cyberspace, you know, you, you, I give you this little book to say, you know what, I've I worked it out. Just read that and you'll be, you'll be all right. And if I've got any questions, I'm in room 17 and, you know, I just hang out there for the day. So Twitter is big. It's big. And the way to get, get noticed is to use these, these little tactics. So with the hashtags then, say um, if you want people to know that you've done a tweet and it's all about uh, video on Twitter, so you would hashtag Twitter video or video Twitter or video yeah, on yeah, yeah. Twitter. So it's all Doesn't one matter, word with no spaces, yeah. And That's then right. say if it's Twitter for business, then it'll be hashtag Twitter for business all in one, one line. Yeah, well, the actual game of it, this is where it gets really cool is that I've tried all the variations, Twitter for business with the for and for, with the FOR. I've tried it separately. I've tried it together. And as I said, I've been there before. I wrote a book and I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for you. You've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to practice. Sometimes just as simple as adding a plural, you know, uh, Twitter for businesses as opposed to a Twitter for business. Or I've often found that adding plurals to hashtags works actually well. So mm. th the point is that there's no, there's no guarantee. Like often, if you use the analogy of YouTube, someone will come to me and go, I just released a video today, I want it to go viral. Well, there's no way you can guarantee a video is going to go viral. That's the reason why they go viral, because they're, they're unique, they're different. If everyone's videos went viral, then no one would, like if you've ever seen the movie Bruce Almighty, with uh, Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. everyone in the world wins Tats Lotto on one particular day and they all get about 15 bucks, right? Because, you know, he plays God for a day and everyone wants to win the lottery, so everyone does win the lottery and they get about $15. So there's no guarantees, but what I, what I recommend is that you try these techniques to help you stand out. That's what I do. That's my job. My job in the world my value proposition to the world is that you've got stuff, you know your stuff, you know you're awesome and you've got it, but you're a little bit invisible. Same with job seekers. It relates to job seekers. You're, you've got awesome skill set, but no one's hiring you because they haven't heard of you. They don't know you. You haven't positioned yourself. And Twitter is a great way to do that. It's just an extraordinary way to do it. Extraordinary. Now, now Keith, you mentioned dashboards. Okay, so you mm. mentioned Hootsuite and Buffer, and I know that there's another one that I use is Social Jukebox. Explain to us the importance of the dashboards. Mm. Okay, Those let me just explain what I mean by jukebox. I mean by, I mean by dashboards. Dashboards, Hootsuite, TweetDeck. A, a dashboard, this is the technical definition of a dashboard. The dashboard is a panoramic thing that segments either followers or uh, uh, hashtags so for instance if you're if you if i was tweeting say for the australian open 
just as an example. I could actually set up a, a column for each of the tennis players and a hashtag and a column for all of the hashtags and I could track it on one screen or maybe two screens. And that's called a dashboard, Hootsuite Tweet Deck. What you're talking about is scheduling and buffer and social jukebox and a really cool site now I'm playing with called Nimble Quotes, allow you to schedule out tweets. And the reason that's important, this is incredibly important. I know a lot of people don't want to do it, but it's incredibly important. The reason why it's important is that Buffer, my favourite of these, did a study and found that the optimum time, be ready for this, the optimum time to tweet is 14 times a day. 14? And I know what? I know no one wants to hear that. I know no one wants to hear that. But they did a study of about a million tweets. And they said, here's this person tweeting once a week. Here's this people, tweet, people tweeting once a month. Here's this person tweeting every second minute. Here's this person t- tweeting once a day. And here's this group of people, this cluster of people tweeting 14 times a day. Basically, the way that works out is once an hour on the hour in your waking hours from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. in your waking hours. And, you know, you're allowed to have a, you know, you're allowed to go to sleep. We're human beings. We're not robots. So scheduling, getting back to your idea of Buffer and Hootsuite and Social Jukebox, allows you to schedule out tweets periodically throughout the day because you're busy. You're busy running, you're picking up the kids, you're cooking dinner, you're having a run. This particular idea is the hardest part to get, the difficulty between being there live because everyone wants to talk to you now and having a personal life. So scheduling is that middle ground that allows you to send out the evergreen tweets. Like that tweet from my show on the, in, on the 84th episode, that's an evergreen tweet. You, you, I spoke well that day. You, you really dug deep into my story. It's an, it's an, I'm proud to share that. So I could have that sitting on automation once a week. I could send that out again for the people that haven't yet heard it, which I think you do, don't you? You send out mm, inside. I, your own. I know. Well, this is why your name pops up <laughs> all the time because it's, it's, a, it's a good interview. I want people to hear it. And sometimes because there's so much chatter on Twitter and the feed disappears so fast that if you don't retweet something or if you don't tweet something a number of times it's very easy for people to miss it but um yeah. I, I, what, what, what i found is using the hashtag really helps so if someone is going to look for keith keller then they're going to find all the tweets that have got hashtag keith keller on it and so uh, then they'll be able to find my very own hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem is if you hashtag Jane Jackson, it's like, oh, there are so many of them. And usually they get Janet Jackson instead of me because she's more famous. So there you go. What can you do? So, but thank you for explaining the dashboards because that sounds really interesting. So you can actually monitor the activity of your tweets. But I think for job seekers starting out, that might be getting a little bit too complicated. Yeah, we, we're talking about tech. Let's bring yeah. it back to job seekers. Job seekers yeah. can benefit from Twitter mm-hmm. because. One, there's a 46% chance that if you know someone on LinkedIn, they've got a Twitter account. Mm. Two, there's a 32% chance that someone on, in Australia is on Twitter. And three, it's a great secondary network for you to leverage because you want a job. You know, you, you either want a job or you want to change jobs and you want it now. You're impatient. It's not something you're doing for fun. This is your professional development. Just spend an hour on it every few days here and there. Mm. And it's just a secondary network. Mm. that'll get things moving yeah i think i think that's enough for someone to delve in and give it a bit of a go um and then they can see the power of twitter and how good it really is because once you get onto it you can get the breaking news you know when when i'm worried about you know say say my daughter living in london when i you know heard about you know all of those those recent events which were really quite scary i thought oh oh my goodness what's going on and so of course after i checked that she was okay then i thought well what's happening to everybody else and so i just looked at the hashtag you know london bombings or whatever it was and i was able to follow very closely exactly what was happening to everybody who was in the vicinity or when they were leaving and so have, it, have you noticed it since I've to, have, sorry? have you noticed it since i've turned you on to twitter you uh, you like it more yeah, definitely. Mainly because I find it really good for news. And also, what about job seekers? Like, say if you're looking for um, 
a job in a technology company and you think, oh, or, or maybe it's computers. Or I know like Dell, the computer company, they use Twitter for job, for job seekers. Well, they do. Of course, there's a lot of, a lot of yeah. the HR people, they, they yeah. do it that way. Yeah, you know, look, looking for a software engineer or whatever, and it could be from that particular company. So I think... I, I think I, I want to come back to this story because mm. now it's a good segue to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The most important use of Twitter, the most important use of, above every other idea that I've ever had is in the networking. Now, I want to share this story. I was... Uh, my habit, don't tell my wife, is that when my wife goes to bed about 10 o'clock, I just quickly check my feed for my American and mainly my European clients. Then I, I personally do the dishes and that's my way of winding down. It's something organic. I touch the water and I dry them off. And then I go to bed maybe 12 o'clock. But at one particular night, 11, a. 11 p.m., this guy from New York, a seemingly random person, says, Keith, I've been noticing your Twitter feed and if you're ever in New York, can you come and have a chat because I want you to come and chat to my board. I want, you to, I, want, you know, I want you to give this goss to them. I'm, I'm just, it was 7 a.m. in New York. He's still in his jam. He's having a piece of toast. And I go, no worries, Barney was his name. Turns out, turns out this guy was the global marketing manager for Mercer. Wow. With a global budget of about like $150 million. And he said, mate, if, if, you're, if you're ever in New York, I will honour this promise. You, I will get you in. So we're chatting randomly in a moment. This is what I'm talking about with networking. It was 11 p.m. my time because I was just checking my feed. It was 7 a.m. his time because he'd just woken up and he was just checking his feed before he goes to the office. When you get your head around the fact that that's how people use Twitter in moments, you can get real people in those moments. I've got this guy in his jammies having toast and jam. He got me in my pajamas. And he would have found you and reached out to you because he would have seen one of your tweets. That's right. Mm -hmm. So so it's, it's a, the networking I think is the much more powerful use of Twitter than any other thing. Remember real people work for companies. People, companies are made up of real people. There's an HR manager. There's an SEO. There's a CEO. There's a marketing manager. You know, there's real. There's a receptionist. They're real people, and those real people have stories. Whether they've got a dog or a husband or a Volkswagen, or they live in a flat, or they're on holidays. Those stories, those the, the emu shot, for instance, which we'll talk about in another time. You know, th- that's me being myself. It's a, it's an, it's a, it's an avenue into a conversation. And oh, by the way, Keith, turns out we've got a job going. Do you want it? Turns out, by the way. You're not pitching yourself. You're just having a chat about emus and Volkswagens. So that's always the most effective of, uh, way of, of you know, endure, you know, what, what's the word, endearing yourself to people. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So so now they've – so Twitter, I'm sure everyone's convinced that they've got to give it a go. So what's going to be new for Twitter in uh, 2018? Yeah, well, <clears throat> you might not even have heard this yet. This only happened yesterday. It's hot off the press, so fresh. The world is erupting. You want to, you want to, uh, you want to find <laughs> tell, out. What's tell us. Go I to, can't wait. Tell me. Tell me what's erupting. Go to 280 characters. That's the hashtag. It's erupting. It's erupting. <laughs> what's it really, erupting? <laughs> really famous people are saying really, really, really bad things. So what Twitter decided about a month ago is, you know, we're going to have a go at doubling the, the character limit. And guess what? I got it. I mean, I, I got it. I don't know why they gave it to me, but I got it. And I was playing with it on my PC and I was playing with it on my tablet and I ran a Twitter poll. What do you think? Twitter 280, what do you think? Good, bad, indifferent, don't care. Oh, you mean it's not limited to 140 characters anymore? 180. They doubled it oh, yesterday. It became official. But, but only to special people. I probably No, no, know. everyone now. Really? Yesterday they, left the, yesterday they loaded. The way you can tell if people want to check is you'll get a sort of a a wheel instead of the numbers. So if you type in a tweet and there's a wheel, mm-hmm. and it looks like it's going around like a clock, you've got 280. If you've still got the numbers and it calculates down. I don't have a wheel. I'm just, I've got my phone. I'm trying you've to. Got numbers? I'm just, no, it says 132. I'm just saying, hi, Keith, at Keith Keller. Hang on. <laughs> and the numbers roll down. I, I don't have a wheel. <laughs> okay. Hashtag Twitter 280. Hashtag Twitter 280. 
Twitter so that's to exactly what I mean by Twitter to eight. What I mean okay. by hashtag. All right. Well, I haven't got it, but I'm hashtagging it, and I hope some, somebody notices and gives it to me. <laughs> yeah, so that's brand new. Like that's what wow. I love. That's what I do. Wow. You know, so we can, you know, we can I'm now a say person. more. We can now say more. Whereas actually, I kind of like the 140 characters because it meant we had to be really succinct. But at least if there's something that a, a bit more information that you want to impart on someone, mm. having 240 characters, you're still going but, to be. Uh, I, I might actually be the only person in the world willing to put their hand up to say they like Twitter 280. Mm. If you if you type in hashtag Twitter 280 or more importantly hashtag tw- tw- 280 characters, you will see really famous people using really naughty words. Really, I'm going to hashtag. It's so angry. You keep talking. I'm 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 hashtagging Twitter 280. <laughs> but every, so, everyone else is going to do it too. Hashtag. So the point the point is there that okay, it's November 2017. Let's date this. It's happened today. Mm-hmm. Uh, We've now got twice as much room to get our point across. Now, I personally think that's an extremely good idea because I'm very verbose. As you know, you're going to have to shut me up. I could talk till 20, 10 o'clock at night. I've got so much to say. So I found it extremely difficult to use Twitter in that sort of shorthand style. I, I've become accustomed to it, but I, I don't. It's not the part of it I love. This is so interesting. <laughs> You're right. I've just done a hashtag of Twitter280. You know, I'm listening. But then, um, okay, so I saw, I see my, my tweet saying, hi, Keith, I don't have a wheel. Um, and then, oh, there's a bit of swearing. And someone says, if you can't make your point in 140 characters, you will probably not be able to do it in 280. <laughs> and there's a picture of Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> getting angry oh how interesting okay all right this is fascinating but you see i mean so now right. i know what everybody across the world thinks of twitter 280 because i put in hashtag twitter 280 and i can join in the conversation this That's is right. the beauty of twitter That's isn't exactly it right. yep. so twitter 280 is a trending topic mm-hmm. 280 characters is the more trending but i the reason i don't use it is because i can never spell character i always put h's and s's in the wrong place but um i can never spell it so I always get it wrong. <laughs> but um, Twitter 280 is something easy to understand. So it's happened now, and one, this is why I love social media. If you want to stand out from the crowd, one way to do that is to pick something that's hot and topical and leverage it, become part of it, master it. And that's the perfect segue into what is absolutely going to be the number one trend on Twitter in 2018, if it's not already. And that is that everyone who wants to do it is embracing video. Yeah. Video is scary, but we're on video. We're on Zoom. You'll hear this as a podcast, which is the audio, but we're actually recording it on a lovely site called Zoom, which may become, and I'm hoping it will, some little chunky videos. In fact, I'll probably do this just to show the point of how video can be so powerful. So here's why you would use Twitter video. A lot of Everyone's heard of YouTube. Everyone. You put, a, you put a video on YouTube, it takes a long time to load, and you finally get it to load, and it's long. Maybe it's you being interviewed at the local, or, you know, you're on this podcast, the other's an hour. No one's going to watch an hour of video, no one. Sure, it's on YouTube, and you can say it's on YouTube, but no one's going to watch it. So what you can do with Twitter at this stage, 140 seconds, 2 minutes and 20 seconds, you can take a section of that interview, a section of your song, a section of you speaking, a a section of you at a gig because you do a lot of speaking, and you can actually put it into Twitter and embed it in the tweet and it'll auto-play. So you've got this, say you've got this cool speaking, say you do a TED Talk and you've got this tweet and you're speaking and it's you being yourself at your best. You could send someone to YouTube, you could send them off to YouTube and they might go, But if you had it embedded inside a tweet, you can play up to 140 seconds inside the tweet and it will auto-play on silent. And people, it's very simple to click, and you've seen this, it's very simple to click to make a play. But what I do, and this is the trick, this is the power of Ninja Trick, is that I consciously and deliberately edit and put captions over the top. You've seen that, the way that my Mm. my computer scroll. So you don't... Imagine this, and this is what happens to my wife. 
She's on the train. She's accessing Facebook. And some random video starts with sound. And she's very embarrassed. She's on a crowded train and she doesn't really want to hear about some girl's you know, crying baby. But these videos auto-play. There's ways to turn this stuff off, but most people don't know how to do that. So with Twitter, videos auto-play on silent. That's the default. So it's very soft, sensible, in, in, you know, invisible. So you can be consuming videos on the train. No one needs to know. But the problem is if it's a video, no one can hear you because they can't hear what you're saying. Well, there's Keith speaking. I've no idea what he's talking about. He looks all right. So if you put a little caption with either the major points or a transcript, people are suddenly watching the video going, ah, oh, that's what Keith's saying, like watching SBS. So, Keith, how do you do it? So say someone wanted to put in their 140 seconds worth of video. Mm. Um, what editing tool do you use? Yeah, yeah. So I personally use Windows Movie Maker because I'm a Windows PC dude. It's a bit old, but I love it. It's very simple to use. Uh, iMovie has the same functionality if you're a Mac iPhone person. In fact, I'm sure there's really great apps on the iPhone to do this. There's always great apps on the iPhone. But what I do is I take a file, say this file, which will be an MP4. You'll send me this file. It'll be maybe an hour long in total. I'll chop it up with Windows Movie Maker and chop it into, say, three-minute sections and then I'll just edit it down. takes a bit of time. And, I'll, and as you said, I put a little bit of music on at the front and the back and sometimes it's a bit long. You don't want to get straight to the point. So the point with, with anything is that video is hot. It's very, very popular. Now the real challenge is that you've got to master it. You know, it's like there's 100 ways to cook chocolate cake. There's a hundred ways to make pad thai. Maybe there's one authentic way, but there's my way and there's your way and there's you can have noodles, you can have meat, you can have not meat. So <laughs> Keith, you know, I, have to, I have to stop you there. You have some of the most funny metaphors. <laughs> you know, we're talking about Twitter and suddenly it's pad thai or it's chocolate cake or it's all of these. I love talking to you, Keith. I just had to say that. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing about creativity, and this is why social media is great, mm. and this is why Twitter and, and more importantly video is great, You've got me in a moment where I've just come back from a really cool trip where I saw an emu that stole my food. That's a story I can tell. We, we have to hear this story. <laughs> I've delayed it long enough. Tell us your emu oh, story. Okay, okay. A, this, is a great, this is a great example of how social media echoes life and that by me telling my story, I'm actually giving you the goss on who I am as a person, separate to my professional entity. So we went away four hours from Melbourne to a really cool national park and they have emus running wild there. We went up this really great volcano right to the top called Journey to the Last Volcano, the last active volcano in Australia 25,000 years ago, and we took these great photos and we came back and we're having lunch. And uh, this emu, a huge emu, came and stole my apple. And like, just looking at me going, what are you doing? Can I have that? And just reached over and in front of me, reached over while I was talking to my wife and grabbed my apple and just went away. Moment in time, priceless moment in time. Luckily, my wife, who's really, really clever, had a camera in her hand because she saw the emu coming. She goes, I wonder what's going on here. She saw it coming. She saw it circling. And exactly at that moment that it duck its head in, she got a photo of me looking at this emu going, what, what, what's going on? This really bedazzled look. Priceless. Priceless. <laughs> is this, is this on Twitter? Is this and on so Twitter? It's my, it's my profile on, um, it's my profile shown on Facebook, but here's a very good example of how I use that as a did hashtag. You, did you tweet no, it on Twitter? Oh, ooh, yeah. let me find, what's the no, hashtag? I'm the going hashtag to find it now. Melbourne Cup Long Weekend. Oh, Melbourne Cup. It doesn't say emu. Um, so we were in Port Ferry, Victoria, Melbourne Cup long weekend. Because what I wanted to do on that particular occasion, just to put it, you know, give a real context, is we went away for the weekend. I found it. Look, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing? 
Oh, Melbourne Cup long weekend hashtag. There it is. I found it in all of two seconds, right? And there's the picture of Keith. <laughs> you and the you and the emu for anyone who's watching the video. <laughs> Who Podcast. That's fantastic. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> so that has nothing to do with social media, but but the point is that that's a real moment of me being myself. And remember, the guy in his pyjamas having toast at seven in the morning happened to be the global marketing manager for Mercer. And if I happened to live in New York, he was happy for me to talk to the board. So I would never have met him just walking in. Hey, mate, I just wanted to know if you had any jobs going. You know, you, you, you really weakened your power by giving it, putting yourself in that position. But because I caught him at a moment where he was being real, I've had, ma- I've had amazing conversations this way, amazing. The most amazing one was I was chatting to this person who was the global, mar- no, the European marketing manager for Microsoft. And I'd just come back from a walk on the beach and I posted it. And she said, oh, that's a lovely photo. I'm from Melbourne. Now I live in Amsterdam. And I said, oh, where are you? She goes, oh, I'm from Mentone. It's 10 minutes away in the car. And so suddenly the global, sorry, the European marketing manager from Microsoft, who's having a moment in Amsterdam, just downtime, is chatting to me about a sunset photo that was taken near her house when she grew up. So can you see how that just changes the dynamic? Mm. It's just all, changes it's the all dynamic. to do with being able to be found because of your hashtags as well. But sometimes even if you don't hashtag something, you could put in your location and if people want to look at photos of their hometown, whether it's in Melbourne or Long Beach or whatever it is, and they're able to find it, that would be quite amazing. You know, it well, reminds me, me, Can I embed something in the podcast for people to check on because this hasn't yeah. yet happened? Sure. So what the second thing that happened while I was away, the first thing I, I met this really lovely person, and we're, we're besties now, and I'm going to help her. She's got Parkinson's. I'll talk about that another time. But the second thing that happened is that someone found me and said, look, we've had a spot come up in our conference. Would you mind just fill in the gap? So, I mean, I know it's late notice, but can you just come and you know, open your mouth and say stuff? You know, fill in the gap. There's, there's an hour. Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Tuesday at 4 o'clock, someone's pulled out. Can you fill in? And I'm away. I'm a long way away. I couldn't even get a signal most of the time. So on Tuesday, the 14th of November, because I know this is recorded before that, but people will listen to it afterwards, I'm doing this event where I'm speaking with really cool people, like really massive people, so proud. And we're using the hashtag future SN now, the future of social media now. FN now. No, it's future. SN oh. now. SM now. The future oh, of social future, media now. Future S for sugar, M for mother now. Okay. Yeah. Got the hashtag. Now, I've started the ball rolling because I'm speaking next Tuesday, but there's like 20 really massive high-level speakers speaking. And each of those, and this is exactly what Twitter is. I want people to, I want people to check this whenever they're listening to this because at this stage there's virtually nothing there because I haven't yet spoken. But on Tuesday, we'll probably make it a trending topic, one of the most popular topics of the day. All of the speakers will start tweeting, we'll take selfies and we'll do videos and we'll have fun. There it is. I I found it. I found it. Anyone looking at the video, here's future SM now as a tweet. Oh, there you've got lots of likes and you've had lots of shares. Now you've got an extra one. I've just shared it. (laughs) And I'm sure there'll be so much more. If you're using the analogy there of uh, hashtags, I'm, I now know that I'm speaking next Tuesday. So I forward dated the possibility that someone will want to find that stuff because there's people there that are going to share wisdom. And this is, this is the thing I love about social media most of all. You go to an event and someone speaks and then they go away. And you think, what, what did they say? I, I lost it. I didn't get it. I mean, is there a video of that? I want to hear that again. So social media, specifically video, allows you to capture those glorious moments. You know, I might speak really well. I might say some really funny stuff. I might just be very spontaneous just for a change. <laughs> you know, I might say something profound. Mm. And only the people in <laughs> you the might. room, you know what I mean? Only the people in the room get it. 
sure there's 120 people going to that event and most people get it and that's what they're paying for. But wouldn't it be great that if, you know, you get home and you go, well, what Keith, what was that thing Keith said about the email? I want to hear that story again. You can access it. You know, this is what I talk about content curation, content creation. You create content, but you curate it as part of a, a bigger story. And that's why Twitter is standalone in its power to do that. Mm. You know, on Wednesday when I get home from the event, I'll be, I'll be tweeting my head off and I'll be collating all that information and a week later there'll be this stream of absolute pure gold. I love it. I mean, you can see why I'm, I get it. You can see why Twitter's got to be part of it. No, that's, 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 that's very exciting. I think the power of the hashtags is definitely something that's like a real a huge key takeaway for everyone listening and uh, and just be able to you know put any hashtag for any event and you'll be able to find everything there or even if you you know if you just wanted to do it for fun rather than job search or building your business and you go on a holiday and you go to zurich and you hashtag zurich like you did yeah that's right or was it jj in the usa 2017 yeah. i know it was jj in the usa 2017 it was good wasn't it yeah. So those are there. You'll be yeah. accessing those for years. Mm-hmm. You can, every time you, if you just do it now, you can find they're all there. Mm. They're all there. I went to Jan, I went to LA in January. KK in LA 2017. Mm. I can still access that group shot. We took in a Mexican restaurant on a you know Wednesday afternoon. So, you know that this is the power of hashtags. I was there. We had a great time, and then we went away. But I can now access that photo at any time. Mm. and remember those feelings and share them with my friends and, more importantly, tell my friends about these awesome people that I met. Networking 101. Mm. Yeah. Now, Keith, Keith, I could talk to you all day. I know, I know you've got to go. Ha- I know. How- however, however, I want people to, to know where they can find you. Obviously, at Keith Keller is where yeah. they can find you. But what do you offer the world? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got this, I've got this really cool idea. I, um, someone once said to me, if I was to tweet for people, what would I do for them? Because I recommend that if you really want to leverage Twitter, you need to do it an hour a day. No one, no one has an hour a day, I know that, but that's what I recommend. So I do that. I do it for people, an hour a day. And I, I've got this thing called magic, Twitter Magic 123. I basically do three specific tasks each day for people at Twitter Magic 123. Dot com. magic one two three dot com and, and the, the twitter magic one two three idea is that within the hour i do three tw- chunks of 20 minutes i follow people i i tweet for you i follow people back i engage so a lot of people have said to me i love how you've got all this stuff keith but i don't have time so twitter magic one two three dot com you can, i'll do it for you Fantastic. an hour a day and, you know, as long as I max out, I can do eight or ten a month and then I'll eventually I'll have to get staff. But mm-hmm. at the moment, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I've got a, a variation on that which I call Twitter Magic 1234, and that is that I usually do three sessions, but now I'm doing four sessions for 495. Oh. I'll, I'll basically teach you one-on-one. Like, okay, you've got a business in the city that sells this. How would you use Twitter for that? Because, you know, you can't get everything from YouTube. <laughs> You know, you can't learn everything by just sitting on YouTube. Sometimes it's nice to talk to a person. So it used to be Twitter Magic One Two Three, three sessions for four ninety five. But I've just I've just decided to have a bit of fun with it and call it Twitter Magic One Two Three in brackets four. Uh, it's still Twitter Magic One Two Three dot com for the the link. But four sessions for four ninety five. I'll teach you everything I know uh, if I can. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, I was going to I'm doing it all day. Yeah. Well, I'm, what I'm going to do, Keith, is I'll have all of these on my show notes and your links and hyperlink them at janejacksoncoach.com so people can hop over there, listen to the latest Keith Keller podcast episode where you've learned all about Twitter and hashtags and dashboards and what you need to do to build your brand on Twitter. And um, I'll, I'll have the links also to twittermagic123.com and everything else about Keith Keller. So it honestly, I could talk to you all day. You can probably tell we can just chat. There's so much to talk about when it comes to Twitter. Um, and I think now we'll just get people to get them started, get yourself a Twitter handle, uh, get yourself a good profile photo, have a good 
uh, background image as well. Uh, make sure that you start to tweet. Uh, remember the optimal number of tweets per day is 13 a day. Is that right? Okay. 14 a day, 14 a day. And then and then if they're able to schedule it, then it'll save them some time as well. But if you get confused, go to twittermagic123.com and Heath will get it sorted for you. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Keith. It's no really, worries at all. Really no worries at all. <laughs> Please send me the video because I want to make some videos for this too. I will. I will definitely. It's so much fun. So wonderful talking to you. And I will be talking to you again soon because in 2018, we've got to see how all of this has gone. Okay. No worries. We'll do an update. Great. Thanks, Keith. Bye. See you. If you'd like to find out how coaching can help you, visit janejacksoncoach.com where not only will you be able to listen to other fascinating interviews from professionals who've made amazing career changes, you'll also be able to download some free ebooks and guides on how to manage your career effectively. You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com.